I'm Cheryl, this is Arthritis Life, and today I'm with Dr. Percy Valderia, and he's offered to tell you guys a little bit about what is rheumatology. So, what is a rheumatologist? Well, first, thank you for having me oh, here. No. <laughs> uh, so, a rheumatologist is an internist who underwent okay. further subspecialty training okay. uh, to diagnose and manage systemic autoimmune conditions mm -hmm. and musculoskeletal diseases. Right. And so what is an internist, if people don't know? So an internist is a specialist mm -hmm. who deals with adult patients. So what kinds of patients do you see? So the typical patients that I see have rheumatoid arthritis, mm -hmm. um, lupus, right. psoriatic arthritis, osteoarthritis, and gout. Okay. Uh, what inspired you personally to become a rheumatologist? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So. Uh, I knew early on that I mm -hmm. wanted to be in a field where I can see patients long term, mm -hmm. where I can help patients manage their conditions uh, for a long period of time. Okay. So I started in residency in internal mm -hmm. medicine. Mm -hmm. And then when I was in residency, I gravitated towards rheumatology mm -hmm. uh, because I love the diagnostic dilemmas. Oh, <laughs> thank uh, you for loving that. Cause <laughs> The patients don't always. <laughs> right, and, and I was excited by the therapeutic uh, advances in the field. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also, uh, I knew then that I could have a tremendous impact on patients. Yeah, I mean, um, that sounds amazing. And, and when you say diagnostic dilemmas, can you explain a little bit, maybe to the layperson, what, what you mean by that? You're right, so in, in rheumatology, most of the conditions that we see you know, there's no single blood test, mm -hmm. right? Or exam finding that diagnoses the condition. Right. And right. a lot of the conditions that we see also are what we call diagnosis of exclusion, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. you can have a positive rheumatoid factor or a positive anti-CCP and not have rheumatoid arthritis, for example. Or on the other end, you can have negative tests for rheumatoid factor or, or anti-CCP, right. which are markers for rheumatoid arthritis but still have the disease. Right, so it's kind of like if I fell off you know, a ladder and it broke my arm, I go to the ER That's and they right. take an x-ray and they're like, your arm's broken, I can see it right there. Where rheumatology is kind of, feels like the opposite. Right. You're like, there could be, kind of like in Dr. House, it could be lupus, it could be lupus, it could That's always right. be lupus. <laughs> Right. And, and also, uh, I mentioned most of the conditions are also diagnosis of exclusion, mm -hmm. right? So you want to make sure that what the patient is having is not explained by another disease. Yeah. How, how do you cope, I'm curious, with, with all this ambiguity or gray areas? Like, I feel like for me, it, it would make me kind of anxious mm -hmm. or feel overwhelmed. Well, I think uh, a, a big part of it is uh, being up to date with mm -hmm. information, mm -hmm. right? right? Because right. Uh, the more you know about the different conditions, the right. more you are better equipped to deal with right. the uncertainty. And the patients are leaning on you to help them make decisions. Right, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm sh most of the patients, I'm, I'm assuming from my own experience, are like a little bit confused mm -hmm. by the time they get to you because they're like, okay, maybe I've Googled this a little bit or I have a friend who might have had something similar, but it, it could be so many different things. So That's right. having a provider who's really well informed and can help patients deal with the ambiguity is like worth its weight mm -hmm. in gold. <laughs> so. Um, I wanted to also see if you could maybe walk the audience through just a typical day as a rheumatologist. Right, so I spend most of my day here at the uh, Poly Clinic. Mm -hmm. um, so as I mentioned, I see patients uh, with rheumatologic conditions mm -hmm. and most of the conditions are diagnosis of exclusion. Right. So I ask them about their medical history. Mm -hmm. I try to explain their symptoms, uh, thinking about what other potential conditions may cause them. Right, right? And right. then when I examine them, I look for evidence of joint tenderness, mm -hmm. joint swelling. Mm -hmm. If there's a discordance between the history and the physical exam, sometimes I right. do joint ultrasounds. Oh, okay. Um, and then we discuss the most likely diagnosis, we talk about the treatment options, and then we make a decision together. Sometimes I also do joint uh, injections. Oh, right, right. right. Um, how on a given day how many patients do you see on, on, on average maybe that are brand new that are going mm -hmm. through the diagnostic journey versus 
the ones that are for you know the three month follow up, so the continued care. Right. Care. So I see about maybe five or six new patients a day. Right. Oh my gosh! Right. Wow, that's a lot. Right. And then you track of all those people <laughs> every day. Wow. And then uh, maybe you know eight to ten uh, follow up patients in one day. Wow. Th that's a busy day. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. I was just right. I'm amazed because. In my field, in, in occupational therapy, you have, an, you have an hour with each person typically, right. so you would only see like eight total, and that would be like a busy day. But um, And you, you normally, for a, a follow-up appointment or a, pa a chronic long-term patient, you would have 20 minutes, is that right, typically? Yeah, 20 or 30 20 minutes. 20 or 30, okay. And then with the new patient, do they get more time? Right, they, okay. they usually give them an hour. Okay.